And I've been there actually for uh, 36 and a half years, so it's, uh, it was a long time, but it was a, a kind of a surprise when uh, they told us that the uh, Christmas Day was going to close. So it uh, kind of bumps me right out. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'll start reading. Uh, I'm glad to see uh, that the Yokelands Hub has inspired so many people. Great to see this enthusiasm to develop this beautiful property of the former Gulf Correctional Center to become a heritage parkland. I remember driving to work for about 26 and a half years, and enjoying my ride through the property many years ago. I also think back, I realized that without the planning of administration and teaching of landscaping skills to the inmates has helped us to form this vision. This structural insight of rehabilitating inmates has been beneficial in giving us the foundation of the recreation of the creation of your plan, green space. The future has always been based on the past to get ahead, a foundation to build upon from one human to the next. The history, structure, and lesson in the studio. Next. Working as an art director in the Department of Recreation, I was very fortunate that at the time I arrived at the Park Correction Center, the Ministry of Corrections had implemented a full-time art program. First time ever. I chose to have no guards in the art department, which I was lucky with. This alleviated anxieties which gave me which gave the inmates a sense of freedom. This created this created a relaxed environment in the studio, in which inmates became more receptive to the art environment. This opened up a new world for them, to think beyond boundaries and gain new perspectives, and to release stress in a healthy way. Art creates the opportunity to help your, free yourself of negative feelings and destructive behaviors, and build self-worth and confidence, which are also part of the skills you need in the daily life. Full time, the full-time program consisted of three separate sessions per day. The first session was with the inmates from Gatu, which meant they came from a, the program called the Guelph Correctional Correction Assessment and Treatment Unit. These inmates I, I received in the afternoon, which required a slower pace of instruction. Here to the individual needs of each person, my main objective was that they enjoy the feeling of the material and to learn some artistic skills. The second and third sessions were late afternoon and evening. Each session had approximately between 15 to 25 minutes at a time. I was thankful to have four regular volunteers assisting me in various aspects of the daily routines. Especially, I'd like to mention Carol Williams, John Walters, without whose help I could not have fulfilled that was all that I could accomplish, since the studio was divided into three different areas. Extra existence was essential. The first room was established as a pottery and woodworking place. The second was the greatest area, which was set up for stone carving, painting, clay modeling, mold making, leather work, etc. The third room was my office space where I discussed with inmates problems that needed extra attention. So overall, the studio space was about one and a half the size of this room, at least maybe twice the size by the looks of it now. Later on, John Maltes used the office for an added program called The Wound Itself. I will explain this program later since it is partly involved with one method of the painting program, which I will explain next. It's um, under art mythology. First of all, I taught art in an open curriculum, which meant that I was not going to tell them what to do or what to participate in. I showed them certain methods and skills necessary to use the tools and the materials. Most of the inmates wanted to do a painting. I had a method that would work every time. I felt confident in that, I believe. <laughs> Due to the shortage of funds, we reused bed sheets donated by the housekeeping staff 
sheets were thrown on the floor, different colors of the Louvre paint were thrown on them. The paint blended in unique patterns. The artist then saw images in patterns which were outlined with white chalk and painted within the outline. Using this method created artistic insight and interesting paintings which gave them self-confidence and pride. The Wound Itself. John Walter's program, The Wound Itself, was in addition to my overall program. The main objective here was to use art as an expressive means to tap into the troubling emotions and get to the inner soul of the enemy. The addition, the additional group discussions that followed these painting sessions were found strengthened and effect of their inner exploration. By using this creativity in this manner, we were hoping they could channel their energies and thoughts in a more positive manner and improve their ability to function on the outside world in a daily life. John and I concluded that this therapeutic environment created a sense of freedom, and as one inmate summarized, it gave him a welcome respite from his present condition. I would also like to mention, which I think was very important, that several times I took a couple of inmates to art galleries in Toronto. The need to have them relate relating to more interesting artistic environments. The Prison House Foundation of Canada. The Prison House Foundation of Canada provided an, 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 an avenue to escape for the creative talents which are locked behind bars in many penal institutions of this nation. By exhibiting, marketing, and by instruction, prison arts has reached out to and assisted countless fellow humans to free themselves through the medium of artistic expression from the constraints by imposed by incarnation. I was founded and it was founded in 1967 and launched by the St. Leonard's Committee, in which it had grown to a nationwide competition. On May 1st, 1972, the Prison Arts Foundation was incorporated as a registered charitable organization. It was the first such volunteer organization in the world. In the following years, John Walter and I joined the board of directors. The Guelph Correctional Center was very well represented in the exhibitions, which had excellent television and newspaper coverage. Too bad this important foundation was dissolved in 2015 because the government no longer believed in the existence of this program. Murals and indigenous arts. I also like to mention how Vincent Bocini ended up painting so many murals on the inside walls of the institution. When he first came up to the art studio, I noticed that he was a professional in the arts. I wrote a letter to Ron Grady, Deputy Superintendent of Programs, explained the situation at hand and pointed out that Bocini would be an excellent opportunity to have him paint murals throughout the institution. Mr. Grady thought it would be a great idea and so it became a reality. There was quite an indigenous population at the Wealth Center. Some of them came to the art studio in, on a regular basis. Most of them did paintings and some wood covers, usually about cultural and specific images, telling stories, sharing history, legends, and knowledge of the background. Also, in a wood soapstone carver like Kodamono and a wood carver named Paul McHugh, visit the studio frequently. There were several pictures of the indigenous artists I have included in the photo presentation. Some of these artists have displayed in galleries, for instance, Ojibwe artist Richard Bedwash, who became quite known, and he lived from 1936 to 2007, so he's passed on. Later on, the Aboriginal peoples established their own area called the Neighbor Sundrum, or so-called, or also called the Brotherhood. In this area, they stressed the value of spiritual awareness. After this change, fewer in indigenous inmates came to my studio. Now, a recognition of the art program. In 1978, the Ministry of Corrections awarded me the Ontario Ministry of Corrections plaque, which was presented by the minister 
Minister of Corrections, the Honorable Frank Gray, for judging the art category for Prison Art 78 and the development and quality of the program in Guelph. Arts, Ontario, Council, Ontario Arts Council had also announced that the Guelph Correctional Center is the 1982 recipient of the Stedman's Award granted to me for my program in the Arts Department by Mary Norman, Executive Director of the Prison Arts Foundation. I have many newspaper clippings up um, that I have represented the art program in. Some examples of many separate entries in the Gruff Mercury, as many of you have probably read throughout the years. The Hamilton Spectator, Correctional Update, Gruff Arts Council, the Communique, Arts Laura Council, the Laura Senator, Kitchener Record, and many more. Even in the Globe and Mail, we had a centerfold. Also, TVO Television Ontario filmed about the arts program at the Guelph Correctional Center. And now, a bit of a personal uh, vision, a sculptural vision for the Guelph Correctional Center. At, at least, at last, item of this, my speech is about the sculpture I envisioned, envisioned in front of the main building of the Guelph Correctional Center. I talked to Aaron Braden about it. And he thought this was a great idea. So he asked me to come up with a proposal of a maquette side sculpture. And I just about started it, but however, a few days later or so, an announcement was made that the Guelph Correctional Center would close as a correctional institution. So at that time, the concept of a large 12 feet high sculpture in bronze was not to be. I still continue to design the sculpture maquette in clay. The concept of the sculpture was to capture the essence of a semi-abstracted male figure with an expression of troubled emotions within the movement of the sculpture. I call the sculpture remorse. I still have high hopes that this vision could still be a reality. I think it would be a suitable recollect recollection of humanity and what the past stood for. Hope for the best. Thank you very much.